begun. It required almost one million years to complete these clusters of specially created worlds. The local system headquarters planets were constructed over a period extending from that time to about five billion years ago. Three hundred billion years ago, the Andronobar solar circuits were well established, and the nebular system was passing through a transient period of relative physical stability. About this time, the staff of Michael arrived on Salvington, and the Aversa government of Orvantan extended physical recognition to the local universe of Nebadon. Two hundred billion years ago, witnessed the progression of contraction and condensation with enormous heat generation in the Andronobar central cluster, or nuclear mass. Relative space appeared even in the regions near the central mother wheel. The outer regions were becoming more stabilized and better organized. Some planets revolving around the newborn suns had cooled sufficiently to be suitable for life implantation. The oldest inhabited planets of Nebadon date from these times. Now the completed universe mechanism of Nebadon first begins to function, and Michael's creation is registered on Uversa as a universe of inhabitation and progressive mortal ascension. One hundred billion years ago, the nebular apex of condensation tension was reached. The point of maximum heat tension was attained. This critical stage of gravity heat contention sometimes lasts for ages, but sooner or later heat wins the struggle with gravity, and the spectacular period of sun dispersion begins, and this marks the end of the secondary career of a space nebula. 4. Tertiary and Quartan Stages The primary stage of a nebula is circular, the secondary spiral. The tertiary stage is that of the first sun dispersion, while the quartan embraces the second and last cycle of sun dispersion, with the mother nucleus ending either as a globular cluster or as a solitary sun functioning as the center of a terminal solar system. Seventy-five billion years ago, this nebula had attained the height of its sun family stage. This was the apex of the first period of sun losses. The majority of these suns have since possessed themselves of extensive systems of planets, satellites, dark islands, comets, meteors, and cosmic dust clouds. Fifty billion years ago, this first period of sun dispersion was completed. The nebula was fast finishing its tertiary cycle of existence, during which it gave origin to 876,926 suns. Twenty-five billion years ago witnessed the completion of the tertiary cycle of nebular life and brought about the organization and relative stabilization of the far-flung starry systems derived from this parent nebula. But the process of physical contraction and increased heat production continued in the central mass of the nebular remnant. Ten billion years ago the quartan cycle of Andronifer began. The maximum of nuclear mass temperature had been attained. The critical point of condensation was approaching. The original mother nucleus was convulsing under the combined pressure of its own internal heat condensation tension and the increasing gravity tidal pull of the surrounding swarm of liberated sun systems. The nuclear eruptions which were to inaugurate the second nebular sun cycle were imminent. The quartan cycle of nebular existence was about to begin. Eight billion years ago, the terrific terminal eruption began. Only the outer systems are safe at the time of such a cosmic upheaval. And this was the beginning of the end of the nebula. This final sun disgorgement extended over a period of almost two billion years. Seven billion years ago, witnessed the height of the Andronover terminal breakup. This was the period of the birth of the larger terminal suns and the apex of the local physical disturbances. Six billion years ago marks the end of the terminal breakup and the birth of your sun, the 56th from the last of the Andronover second solar family. This final eruption of the nebular nucleus gave birth to 136,702 suns, most of them solitary orbs. The total number of suns and sun systems having origin in the Andronover nebula was 1,013,628. The number of the solar system sun is 1,013,572. And now the great Andronover Nebula is no more, but
but it lives on in the many suns and their planetary families which originated in this mother cloud of space. The final nuclear remnant of this magnificent nebula still burns with a reddish glow and continues to give forth moderate light and heat to its remnant planetary family of 165 worlds, which now revolve about this venerable mother of two mighty generations of the monarchs of light. 5. Origin of Monmatia, the Arantia Solar System Five billion years ago, your sun was a comparatively isolated blazing orb, having gathered to itself most of the nearby circulating matter of space, remnants of the recent upheaval which attended its own birth. Today your sun has achieved relative stability, but its eleven and one-half year sunspot cycles betrayed that it was a variable star in its youth. In the early days of your sun, the continued contraction and consequent gradual increase of temperature initiated tremendous convulsions on its surface. These titanic heaves required three and one-half days to complete a cycle of varying brightness. This variable state, this periodic pulsation, rendered your sun highly responsive to certain outside influences which were to be shortly encountered. Thus was the stage of local space set for the unique origin of Monmatia, that being the name of your sun's planetary family, the solar system to which your world belongs. Less than one percent of the planetary systems of Orvantan have had a similar origin. Four billion five hundred million years ago, the enormous Angona system began its approach to the neighborhood of this solitary sun. The center of this great system was a dark giant of space, solid, highly charged, and possessing tremendous gravity pull. As Angona more closely approached the sun, at moments of maximum expansion during solar pulsations, streams of gaseous material were shot out into space as gigantic solar tongues. At first, these flaming gas tongues would invariably fall back into the sun. But as Angona drew nearer and nearer, the gravity pull of the gigantic visitor became so great that these tongues of gas would break off at certain points, the roots falling back into the sun, while the outer sections would become detached to form independent bodies of matter, solar meteorites, which immediately started to revolve about the sun in elliptical orbits of their own. As the Angona system drew nearer, the solar extrusions grew larger and larger, more and more matter was drawn out from the sun to become independent circulating bodies in surrounding space. This situation developed for about 500,000 years until Angona made its closest approach to the sun, whereupon the sun, in conjunction with one of its periodic internal convulsions, experienced a partial disruption. From opposite sides and simultaneously, enormous volumes of matter were disgorged. From the Angona side there was drawn out a vast column of solar gases, rather pointed at both ends and markedly bulging at the center, which became permanently detached from the immediate gravity control of the sun. This great column of solar gases, which was thus separated from the sun, subsequently evolved into the twelve planets of the solar system. The repercussional ejection of gas from the opposite side of the sun in tidal sympathy with the extrusion of this gigantic solar system ancestor has since condensed into the meteors and space dust of the solar system, although much, very much, of this matter was subsequently recaptured by solar gravity as the Angona system receded into remote space. Although Angona succeeded in drawing away the ancestral material of the solar system planets and the enormous volume of matter now circulating about the sun as asteroids and meteors, it did not secure for itself any of this solar matter. The visiting system did not come quite close enough to actually steal any of the sun's substance, but it did swing sufficiently close to draw off into the intervening space all of the material comprising the present-day solar system. The five inner and five outer planets soon formed in miniature from the cooling and condensing nucleuses in the less massive and tapering ends of the gigantic gravity bulge which Angona had succeeded in detaching from the Sun, while Saturn and Jupiter were formed from the more massive and bulging central portions. The powerful gravity pull of Jupiter and Saturn early captured most of the material stolen from Angona as the retrograde motion of certain of their satellites bears witness. 
Jupiter and Saturn, being derived from the very center of the enormous column of superheated solar gases, contained so much highly heated